God, I wish I was helping running things at DC because this movie would make so much sense after a Man of Steel sequel and two Batman follow-ups. I'm just saying. World's Finest. My god, this movie brings back so much memories. So World's Finest is actually a three-parter from Superman the Animated Series in which the Joker steals a kryptonite dragon and heads to Metropolis. Batman 2 also follows him to Metropolis because he has a deal, a business partner deal with Lex Luthor. Joker talks to Lex and wants Lex Luthor to pay him a billion dollars to kill Superman. And the best line, first, one of three best lines are in this movie and the best line comes from Lex Luthor. What makes you think you can kill Superman when you can't even handle a mere mortal in a Halloween costume? <laughs> On the business side of things, Bruce Wayne has a business partnership with Lex Luthor, of course, to um, make these robotic drones that shape like spiders for space travel to help the astronauts. Uh, Luther, on the other hand, wants them to use them for war, so he went under or behind Bruce Wayne's back and created other robots for military use. But, of course, Bruce Wayne don't like guns, so he disapproves of the idea, and he, he's not going to sign off on it, which pisses Luther off. So, yeah, at the same time, uh, Lois Lane and, of course, Bruce Wayne starts dating a little bit, which kind of ticked me off, and, and it ticks Bruce, I mean, Clark Kent off as well. But, yeah, and I love how each character finds out each, other, each other's identities. No, Superman by X-ray vision, Batman by his little tracking device. That was pretty cool. Okay. And yeah, just Bruce Wayne just stirring the pot between Lois Lane and Clark Kent is fucking funny. But I know if they ever put this movie in the DC animated cinematic universe, it'd be the other way around. You know, it'd be uh, Clark Kent dating Lois Lane because of the events of Man of Steel. So that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> Ugh, everything about this movie is just great. The voice acting, Tim Daly as Superman, he is Superman. George Newbern is good as Superman for the Justice League, but when it comes to the real Superman, you gotta get Tim Daly back, as always, and Kevin Conroy. These two have such great chemistry. And you know what? They're not even on screen. They're like in the sound booth. You don't even get to see their real faces. You just hear their voices talking. It's so fucking awesome okay of course the animation is good since it's basically cut from Superman the animated series so I don't have to say much about the animation of course um, and I liked how they fit Bat they upgraded Batman's animation to match Superman the animated series so that we can have this type of crossover that was pretty cool I like that it took some time but they did it they basically season four of Batman began the new animated route that Superman the animated series came out in in 96 because I believe the new animated series of Batman that had that new look came out in 96 or 97 as well so that was pretty cool pretty cool <clears throat> oh and Mark Hamill as the fucking Joker yeah I don't have to say much about that that's just awesome okay and unlike these there are separate animated series where Harley Quinn and Mercy Graves are kind of useless characters. In this movie, they kind of make them relevant because they kind of get at it too, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, just love that. Oh, just, just great times, man. This movie is such great times. The action is always, always a plus in this movie, of course. And, and just like Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, I find myself quoting... Every line in this movie as well. This is another movie that I watched to death over and over and over again. I'm not going to say it's part. I know it's part of Superman the Animated Series. But I took it away from Superman the Animated Series. Because there's other things I like about Superman the Animated Series. When I eventually review Superman the Animated Series. Spoiler alert. I just said it. Um, so yeah. I might as well take the, the, the big three 
from that animated series and make them into this one review. And, uh, yeah. Just gotta love it. In the end, just like Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, World's Finest is gonna get an A++. Because I love both of those movies to death. That, that much so, where I remember every line. And plus, the other two best lines come from both Bruce Wayne and Batman. The reason why I say it like that is because when Bruce w Batman talks to Lois Lane because he saves her as he's getting chased by a robot, he's like, how do I contact Superman? And she's like, he's out at sea. And then he says, he's never around when you need him. <laughs> and then at the very end where Bruce Wayne is talking to Clark Kent, he's like, you better be good to her because I know where you live. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. I would, I would want, I wanted them to put this in the cinematic universe, but because of the way Man of Steel is, a lot of things would have to be changed. Not to mention the Joker would have to, can can be in the movie, but if you ever do the Batman movie, you save Joker for the third Batman movie because we already had him in the first Batman movie, and then we had him in the universe, in the Nolan universe's second. Batman movie. It only makes sense in this universe to put Joker in the third movie, but we see him before even the first movie even comes out. That would be kind of cool. Kind of cool. Well, not before the first movie comes out, after the second movie comes out, and then you introduce him in this movie. Everybody's like, the fuck? By the way, Bruce Wayne would be a little bit younger, but still. <laughs> and yeah. So that is my review of World's Finest. Let me know what you guys think about this movie down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? And uh, I'll catch y'all later.